welcome back dear students under algebra number theory we are in unit 5 classical theorems and multiplicative functions lecture number 11 where we are going to have a look at the multiplicative functions part 2 let's get on to the presentation so before starting the problems let's have the results of twin primes so these are the two results if p and q are twin primes and if p is less than q then phi of q is equal to equal to phi of p plus 2 that is p should be less than q okay and if p and q are twin primes and if p is less than q then phi of pq the product of these two can be written as p square minus 1 so these are the two important results so there are twin primes numbers So the first problem deals with twin primes. Hope you remember the results. Find the twin primes p and q if phi of p q is equal to 120. Now if p and q are twin primes, I have two results. One is q is equal to p plus 2. So now what do I do? Phi of p q is given equal to 120. so this is what is given in the problem they are asking you to find the values of p and q nothing else so how to find the value of p and q because we have to use the definition or the result of the twin prime so phi of p q is equal to 120 which is given now phi of p remains same you know since it's prime it's twin prime i can replace this q as p plus 2 so what has happened p remains the same and in place of q it is replaced as p plus 2 which is equal to 120 so now i can split this torsion function inside phi function inside phi of p and phi of p plus 2 is equal to 120 right now since this p is a prime number right twin primes means both should be prime right so p so phi of p can be written as p minus 1 There is one number less than that. You know that earlier we had studied in Euler function. And phi of p plus two, p plus two can be written as p plus two minus one. To consider this p plus two as a single number, p plus two minus one is equal to one twenty. Now what has happened? P minus one remains the same, and p plus two minus one, this two my mi two minus one results in one. So I'm having. P minus one into P plus one, which is equal to one twenty. What is this actually? A minus uh, A minus B into A plus B will give you A square minus B square. So P minus one into P plus one will result in P square minus one is equal to one twenty. So if I'm going to take this minus one to the other side, it will become plus one. So P square is equal to one twenty one. So therefore, what is the value of that? It is going to be Uh, plus 11 because we are taking only positive integers. So p is equal to 11. Therefore, p is 11. What is q? Q is 13. So hence, the values of p and q are found using the twin prime definitions. Now let's move on to the second problem. Verify summation of d divides n. Phi of d is equal to n. We are going to verify this for the number n equal to 28. It is like a proof. So now what do I do? The divisor d of n is equal to 28, right? N is equal to 28. So what are the divisors of 28? We are going to factorize it. What are the numbers which can divide 28? One, two, four, seven, fourteen, and 28. So there are totally six numbers. So now what do I do? Summation of d divides 28 in place of n. I will substitute it as 28. Phi of d is equal in, is equal to phi of 1 plus phi of 2 plus phi of 4 plus phi of 7 plus phi of 14 plus phi of 28. Name it as equation one. So what do I do? I will try to find out the value of 1, phi of 1, phi of 2, phi of 4, phi of 7, etc. Finally, substitute in equation one and try to prove it. What is phi of one? Phi of one is one. Phi of two is again two minus one is one. What is phi of four? Phi of four can be written as two square. 
So 2 square is nothing but 2 square into 1 minus 1 upon 2. So this will give uh, 1 minus 1 upon 2 will result in 1 by 2 and that 2 will get cancelled out in 4 and our answer is 2. And then the next number is 7. 5 of 7 is 7 minus 1 is 6. And next will be 5 of 14 and 5 of 28. So now uh, will be uh, 14. 5 of 14 will be 5 of 2 into 7. I can write the product as 2 into 7. So 5 of 2 into 5 of 7. So 5 of 2 can be written as 2 minus 1 and 5 of 7 can be written as 7 minus 1 which is 6. So 1 into 6 will give you 6. So 5 of 28. So 5 of 28 can be written as 4 times of 7. So 4 can be written as 2 square into 7. So now what do I do? 2 square so 5 of 2 square into 5 of 7. So 5 of 2 square can be written as 5 of 2 square into 1 by 1 minus 1 by 2. And 7 can be written as 1 minus 6. So there's a mistake here. Okay. Uh, sorry for the mistake. So it's going to be 5 of 2 square. Again I'm repeating 5 of 2 square is 2 square into 1 minus 1 by 2. And 5 of 7 can be written as 7 minus 1 which is 6. So 1 by 2 of 2 square will get cancelled. Uh, just try to ignore this. Just consider this. 2 into 6 will give you 12. So totally we have uh, chopped down all the values of that. So 5 of 1, 2, etc. So add up all those values. Finally you are getting the n value. So hence it is proved. This is what. The actual devices we are going to find out. Apply the phi function. Get the values. Add up everything. That is the sum of all the devices. That is what the theorem says. So, when you are going to add up everything, you are going to finally result in the given value of n. Commute pi of 8, pi of 81 and pi of 15,625. So, there are three values here. So, solution. The phi function is defined as, this has been already explained here for you. So, this is how the definition carries. So, when n is a prime number, straight away we can write it as p plus 1. So, now what do I do? There are three numbers here. What are the three numbers? 8, 81, and 15,625. R of the form P power K. Why am I saying it's in the power of P power K? I can represent this 8 as 2 cube. So, pi of 8 is equal to pi of 2 cube, which is equal to 2 cube minus 2 square, which is equal to 8 minus 4. 2 cube is 8 minus 2 square. 4, which is equal to 4. 5 of 81. 5 of 81 can be written as 5 of 3 raised to the power of 4, which is equal to 3 raised to the power of 4 minus 3 power cube, which is equal to 3 raised to the power of 4 is 81 and 3 cube is 27. So, 81 minus 27 is 54. If you are getting confused, just look at the second result. The second result says that whenever you have n in terms of p power k, so, I am having it as p power k only. It is like 2 to the power of 3 and 3 to the power of 4. Right? So, then it will be p power k minus p power k minus 1. If k is 5 here, I will write p power 5 minus p power 4. That is what I have done here. Phi of, coming to the last number, phi of 15,625 can be written as phi raised to the power of 6. Now, you can relate to the second condition now. Phi, phi to the power of 6 can be written as phi to the power of 6 minus phi to the power of 5. So, phi to the power of 5 is 15,625 minus phi to the power of 5 is 3,125. So, subtracting these two, you will be getting the answer as 12,500. That's the problem ends. So, it's very easy for the commutation of these three uh, values. Try to remember this formula. When it is of the power of uh, p power k, you have to apply this. When it is just without any power, it is just a prime number, you can just write it as p plus 1. So, since we had all the three numbers in terms of powers of p in the form of p power k, we have used the second uh, function and we have sorted out. Hope you understood. Thanks for watching. Let's continue in the next lecture.